Z-Pipe Maker. What is up, everybody? Here I have Z-Pipe Maker version 2.0 Advanced. And in my scene, I have about nine custom pipes all just kind of laid out randomly just to show you a little bit of what the script can do in maybe 10, 15 minutes after you get all of your custom pipes set up. So, if you haven't seen any of this script before, I highly recommend you watching the video before this going over all the basics as this video assumes that you know all of the basics. Uh, and yeah, let's uh, roll right into it. Alright, so here I have my custom mesh set and I have a few things in here. I got straight pieces, I have a notch piece, a start piece, and an end piece, as well as an intersection piece. I'm going to go over each one and how to place them and set them up and things like that. And we'll start off with the straight up normal as it gets straight piece with a little bit of a notch on it. And you can see that it is modeled in Y axis up. If your settings are set to Z axis up, you would model the pipe in Z axis up instead. The pivot is on the origin and the transforms are frozen and the history is deleted. I have enough uh, loops in the actual mesh itself and it doesn't matter how tall it is, it'll just auto figure it out based off of the pipe scale itself. So once you make a mesh like this, we're going to name it, I named it Pipe 02 No Optimization because I'll show you what that is later. And I'm going to move it over to the side because as long as it has transforms on it after you freeze it, you can go ahead and just push it where are off to the side wherever you want and go from there. So I'm going to go to my advanced tab on the pipe maker script and I'm going to select all of my meshes and hit add custom mesh. What this did is added all of the meshes into the list that allow you to choose which ones to replace later. As you can see a couple of them are out of order so we can go ahead and hit move up and move down to arrange them in the way that you want. So I'm going to just move them up and move them down, get them in a nice organized spot, put this one at the top. And now we'll go back to main controls and you can see there are three buttons that are different from the simple version. It is this drop down list, we have a replace mesh and update mesh. Pretty simple and uh, straightforward. So let's just go ahead and hit add pipe and what this will do is add our pipes that we are going to replace with the other pipe. Now you can see I have no op selected which is the straight simple one that we have and I'm going to go ahead and select all of the pipes I want to replace and hit replace. And now you can see, based off of the scale before, it just replaced all of the pipe meshes and kept the nice width on them to compensate for whatever scale that is on the pipe at the time. So from here we can just keep on adding and it'll just remember which custom mesh you have applied. Uh, the twist amount is based off of how many sides, so if you figure out how many sides your mesh is, uh, I think this one is 10 you can see that it'll comp compensate perfectly for the uh, twist amount as well. It really doesn't matter for things like this, so most of the time I just kind of set this all the way up to 40 so that when I'm turning it, it actually turns the pipe. You can see now that I am starting to get a lot of edge loops and even on straight pieces there are edge loops that are unused and unneeded uh, more than there really should be which is not really ideal for a lot of things so I've allowed the ability to take this pipe and give you the ability to optimize with it using the auto optimization. Another issue with it is that you can see on the bends it's actually bending the notch piece and that wouldn't happen with pipes and you really don't ever want that to happen. It just looks bad, especially if you bend it too much. You get this really awful looking bend piece on it. The way I've figured out how to compensate it for now, because eventually there will probably be little notch pieces that you could place separately, but Right now it's all just one mesh, so uh, to get around it at the moment, we're going to take a look at the next pipe. The next pipe set up is this guy, it is just this straight up pipe O2. This one is set up where the actual notch piece is underneath the origin. And what this does is it's going to take the bounding box from up here for the bend, and this part's going to stick out underneath the origin, and this piece will stick into it. So that way you won't have the bend in that region. and it'll just come out looking a lot better. Another thing that's different about this pipe is that it is set up for the auto optimization system that the pipe script uses. And it's really simple to do and I'll show you how to do it right now. You just go ahead and you have your pipe, you make sure you have no history on it to start with and you're at your final stages you want to make this actual side here auto optimize with the pipe. All you need to do is place an edge loop and what it does is it'll make this poly split ring. As long as you have poly split rings, you can have as many as you want. As long as there's some in there, the script will automatically find it 
and know that you want to use optimization on it. You can still control how many segments you want on the pipe as well. So now that I have this pipe ready to go, it's moved out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and select it, it's pipe 02, and I'm going to go ahead and take all these guys and hit replace. And you can see now the pipe segments changed, and that is because right now we don't have auto optimization turned on the pipes. So I'm going to hit the checkbox and hit optimize all pipes. You can see now on the straight pieces it just has that one edge instead of the six edges that it had before. And on these pieces it'll start optimizing it based off of the optimization threshold. So now that I'm adding on to the chain, I'm starting to get a more advanced pipe, I kind of want a little bit more variation. And usually that means just more crap. So I'm going to start adding a little bit more to this pipe. I'm going to go ahead and bring this guy down a little bit, uh, rotate it a couple times, and bring it down straight to the ground here almost perfectly with the ground. We'll see, we'll try to line it up by eye. It won't be amazing, but. So on the start, I have a pipe that I made called the start pipe, and I have an end pipe. So what these are, just straight up end sections and start sections, just to, you know, add that extra little bit of variation. And all this is, is the start one is from the ground up, and then the end one is opposite. It's just flipped upside down. So with these uh, custom pipes, you can see now I have a bunch on the actual pipe itself now. I'm starting to get a little bit more complex and I want to be able to start selecting which ones are on the pipe and you can. So if you go to advanced again you can select whatever one. So I want to select all the whites that are on the pipe. The Pipe02 white. I'm going to go ahead and select the white on here and go to select custom mesh. And there you go. You have all of your white meshes selected. Now what if I wanted to have more? So this list editor itself works with multiple selections. So I can go ahead and click and drag, and I can just go ahead and hit select mesh. Another great thing about the custom meshes is now, since it's all placed and starting to get a little bit more final, I can go in and say, okay, well, I don't really like how wide this part is. I don't like how some of this is working. So I can just go in to this pipe, and I can say, you know what? I don't like this at all. I'm just going to jack it up. I totally like that better and I want to replace that instead. So my notch piece, I'm going to go ahead and find it in here. You can also do it on this section here. I'm going to hit update mesh. And now it just ran through that mesh itself and updated it on the chain. The very last thing I'm going to show you with the custom meshes is the ability to kind of start using these in a different way. This is not necessarily the way the script was intended to be used, but I found that this is kind of a handy way, kind of a handy hack really, for now until I get some sort of setup for intersections. But right now, you can go ahead, I have this intersection pipe, and it's just a setup for adding another pipe to it. So I'm going to go ahead and replace this guy with an intersection. And now you see that the intersection scales off, so I'm just going to scale it a little bit. There we go. Now I'm going to go ahead and hit new pipe, and on new pipe I'm just going to replace it with my pipe 02. I'm just going to attach this to the end of here just to get it set up for parenting it to the intersection group. And now it's as simple as, once I have it set up, it's as simple as you select your parent and then your child. You hit the up arrow just to select the groups themselves, not the objects, and then you go to your animation tab and under constraint hit parent. So now when this pipe actually moves, you have the other pipe following it. And now from here I can connect controls, add pipe, and do all my crazy additions and whatnot to this pipe. And as I rotate it, so if I go ahead over here and hit controls, connect controls, I can rotate it and it'll follow with it. So that's just a way to uh, get past this system right now and do a nice little hack in order to get the intersection pieces. So you can be creative and figure out different ways to use the script to your advantage. And that's pretty much it. So right now, if you want this script, you can go ahead and go to the link below. It takes you to Creative Crash, and this version of the script, the advanced version with custom meshes and all that, is not free. It is $10, and any type of feedback is awesome. I do take a lot into consideration, and I do think about it a lot. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching the video, and uh, have a good day. Yeah. Bye 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 b